Hello, Trent Goodmanson here. This is going to be a little bit of a different video. I think I, I think I've caught myself saying that often these days. Um, <laughs> I, I guess I always prefer to do something a little bit different than the day before. So today I'm actually going to be working on a, a commissioned portrait, but it's not a typical portrait. It, this is going to be from an old, old photo. Like not just a like from my childhood type of photo. This is uh, this client. Um, he has a he found a picture of his great great grandmother and and her aunt. Uh, so that's what what I'm up against at this point. Um, it's always a challenge, but always a a very uh, fun challenge. So I'll get started. Now, this is the client's great great grand grandmother. Um, she survived. <laughs> Um, she, however, did not survive the, uh, the trek across the plains. Um, I've been asked to do it in color and to do it in a, in a, on the more detailed side of my style. And after discussing some, some things, we decided that a, a 36 inch by 24 inch painting would work. And I'm going to mention I'll do it in color, also clean her up a little bit. And, uh, honor a few requests um, for additions and specifics from, from the client. Another decision we had to make together was to decide um, not only how big to make it, but what to paint on. Sometimes I'll paint on canvas, other times I'll paint on wood, um, or more specifically, uh, hard, hardboard. Uh, this is more durable than wood, it won't crack, it's um, got a long uh, historical track record of, of of being painted on and so I've gessoed it with oh five or six coats of, of prof professional gesso. Going back to the photo you know there there's not a well there's not a lot of detail in it as I get close to the face you know it really becomes pixelated um, that doesn't mean I can't do it it's just I've got to rely more on my imagination and past work on portraits. There's even less information here. Um, of course, they're they're quite dirty from walking for months across the the dry plains. Um, sad story for you know anybody who had to, to deal with that. But I, sh I greatly admire these people. So what I'm going to do first is um, import this into Photoshop, which I've done just a moment ago. And I've begun to uh, crop it as a 36 by 24, which matches the size of this panel that I've been doing, or that I've, that I've prepared. Now the client did ask that I add a little bit onto the side um, to show more of the, the covered wagon, which makes sense. It, it's a little bit difficult to tell that it is a covered wagon um, at first glance. Um, I've been playing with this though and with the added information that'll be up here and down here um, I'm also gonna put some details down here uh, uh, an axe for example was requested which I think is a great idea uh, I, I don't think much space needs to be added over here in order to um, complete the, the vision that this is a covered wagon and there are several things I'm going to to do and add to to make that work. All right, so I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Um, the it, It's nice that her face happens to fall in a, a very pleasing spot. It's it's more about her than anything. Well, it's, it's about them, but uh, that, that's a good spot for a, it's, it's pl pleasant to have um, a person's face land in one of these uh, intersections of these quadrants. So it's nice that that works out so well. All right, I'll commit to that. And what I do from here, um, some of you may or may not be interested in this, but uh, I am going to add a, a measuring bar, so a measuring stick basically to this uh, so that it can correspond in inches to my measuring tape that I'll be using on here. Now I don't always like to do this, and in fact, at times, I've considered it a little bit of a cheat. <laughs> um, I, I, I do it anyway. Um, the reason I do it is because it would be so sad to, to like, 
complete this painting and only to realize that this head is just a little bit too big or something or uh, compared to the rest or that I had made it so big that um, that the feet have to extend down here and they kind of mess up the, the design. Now, if I had all the time in the world to do this, um, I would, you know, I, and I always do prefer to, um, here, let me turn this camera around. So I always do like to, if I can, just paint from, you know, just, just visual translation only. You just look at the, at the subject or the picture and then just translate that directly onto the canvas. Um, with a, a portrait like this, mm, again, I don't want to get so far along and then have it fall apart. Uh, also, where it's going to be more detailed, um, that actually has, there's more of a tendency for that to happen. Uh, the reason I don't like to always rely on uh, measuring tricks like that is because I, I feel like uh, my ability to, to see and translate things directly through my brain and through my eyes uh, will, uh, will, if not diminish, at least uh, not grow. And I, and I want my abilities to grow through each painting. That's part of, of the, the value to me, the lasting value of, of, of doing paintings. You know, sometimes it gets a little too easy. <laughs> um, this is a good example. I just finished this. Um, it's kind of one of my, my mainstays in my career, these uh, interior scenes. Uh, I don't do a lick of measuring. Never have, never will. Uh, it's not necessary. As you'll see, there's not much detail in this, and it's more about the, the general feeling of the space than it is about any one person, although I, I do want to get them accurate. I want them to look like real people, not look weird or cartoony or something like that. But with this one, um, it needs to be more accurate and uh, not just look like people, but those people. <laughs> and it needs to fit within the canvas. So without further ado, I'm gonna get my tape measure out, uh, place the, the digital tape measure, if you will, onto the image and get started. All right, so let me back up just a little bit. Some of you may, if you're an artist watching this, you may be interested in seeing this process. All right, so usually when you bring it up in Photoshop, it's gonna be like this, um, I'll take that grid off for just a second. So the way you want to change this, as you can see, I've got a, actually a, a measuring tool up here. And it says that, that this entire image is only two inches wide. Well, that doesn't work very well. I've been trying to translate it up to 24 inches. So I've got to click on that and drag it outside of the bar there so that it opens up on its own. By the way, this is a picture of that girl a little bit later on. So now that I've got it here, I'm going to right click on it, go to image size, change the image size from roughly 2 inches up to 24 inches. Now this does make it 618 megabytes instead of 4 megabytes. I'm going to bring the resolution down. Let's do 50. That's, it doesn't do any good to like interpolate it and make it bigger. Um, because uh, no more detail will be will be had in it than it, than now is, but at this point you'll see that now uh, the full um, you know the inches uh, translate accurately. Now at this point I can add my uh, grid, and the hotkey for that is uh, Control H, at least for this version of Photoshop. And I've got it divided into quarter inches, um, and then each dark line is an inch. So at this point, it's pretty easy for me to just measure measure over to the canvas. All right, so here's how I do it. Now this is really convenient. Uh, the bottom of her eye, or eye socket, happens to fall at the cross section of 11 inches down and eight inches across. So all I do is, got my trusty tape measure. So it should be 11 down and eight across, and that happens to be right the first time. All right. Always good to double check yourself. <laughs> so that is where the that eye socket is. All right, quick comment real quick. I'm gonna use uh, the brush that I always use, which is just a detail brush. Um, this happens to be a Kalinsky Sable uh, brush that I usually use for um, 
signing my name. It's also what I use to lay out the painting. And the color that I use for this is almost always just a, uh, a thinned down uh, mixture of burnt sienna and black. I feel like that's, uh, it's, a, it's warm, like a, you know, earth tone, like a sepia, um, but it doesn't stand out as bright orange like a straight um, burnt sienna would. Um, I could use burn number two, but I don't have that on my palette. All right, here we go. All right, the first 10 minutes here will be condensed down into about 10 seconds. I'm just measuring, as I showed you before, uh, the key points on the face. Just want to make sure the eyes, nose, and mouth are the proper distance from the the top of the head and the bottom of the chin. All right, I'm going to go back to normal speed here for a minute. I'm going to continue to, to go around the edges. A lot of it, once I get this far, is no longer necessary to measure because I just have um, my reference points. But a few times, you know, here and there, just to make sure, like on the edges of things, make sure I haven't gone too far. So and that's where the edge of her, her ear falls. You know, this, this method, you've, you've seen me soften things with the point of my finger. Uh, this helps um, estimate where something is, while also allowing me to do soft, um, soft shading. Knowing all the while that I'll be um, perfecting it and uh, improving it as I go along. But in this way, I can kind of get an accurate portrayal, particularly where it, it is already in black and white, it's monotone. And so, you know, I'm using the color that it is, also the more or less the, the texture and level, level of detail that it actually is. All right, so her face is more or less in the right place now at this point. got kind of a cute Shirley Temple look, doesn't she? All right, back to fast motion for a little bit. Again, I'm trying to avoid measuring too much. I want my eye to allow for some, some intuitive artistry, but I am measuring these key sections here, putting in the, the scarf here. That's uh, a really good visual, strong visual element of this. You can see the the ant's face uh, starting to take shape here. I'm zooming in now to show you what I'm doing. Isn't it interesting how an entire eye, or a set of eyes in this case, can be defined by uh, a strange looking shadow, but if that sh shadow is the the proper, proper size, proper shape, and the proper placement, it, it indicates what our mind translates as, as the eye sockets and we begin to see a face. Uh, humans are hardwired to see faces and everything and uh, it, it's always amazing to me how how sometimes it takes very little to to see a face. And of course just the the shadow on the top lip here and then the bottom lip uh, makes the, the whole mouth. Just a couple of lines. It's kind of like magic to me even as the artist who's who's the only one literally doing it I'm still amazed at the, the process of art and um, how our brains translate. So now that I've got it in a little, uh, in a little bit, I, I just want to darken those things and kind of commit to them a little bit better. And in that way, I'm also uh, showing that some parts are lighter than others. Some parts are sharper edged, a little bit deeper shadows. And in a way, I'm kind of sculpting in two dimensions, the way that a sculpture would in clay, but um, I'm giving the impression of three dimensionality with darker and lighter areas. Also, uh, softening some parts to to kind of recede into the background or indicate a softer area of the face. Under the nose and on the lips, the lines are sharper than than on the cheeks, and of course on the, on the hair as well. Even closer view, starting to do that same thing, just show a little bit of the darker parts. Uh, this woman has a really neat old 
um, the pattern on her shirt is um, sort of a, a fun repetitive pattern that I think adds some neat visual interest um, as well as being a, um, a little snippet of of time you know from from their time historically accurate beginning to show just where the edge of the dress is down below everything that is added to a painting um, affects everything else that's already been done all right i'm zooming out a little bit and i've jumped ahead a little bit showing you real quickly and you can see i kind of rushed on it not because it i was actually rushed but because it didn't take much to just another couple minutes to put in this these background elements and that's enough of an indication to uh, essentially day. complete the, oh, the picture or the scene the really important parts are the faces first and then the hands and arms second that's the case with almost all portraits or figures i put the most detail where i want the eye to go okay well this has been the first half of the process of painting this painting uh, so far i've just laid out and um, decided where to put everything and the next step will consist of adding color first in large blocks like a coloring book and then I'll be fine-tuning those colors, adding subtle nuances of the skin tones, like the rosiness of the cheeks and, and nose, uh, as well as the, uh, the reflected light from the sky and the, the shadows underneath that are getting reflected light from the ground. Um, it'll be a lot of fun. It's always a really enjoyable process, and uh, it's fun to let my imagination um, use what I've learned over the years from painting from life. and. Uh, instill that into this interesting concept of adding color, lifelike color to this black and white image. Um, I'm excited to, to bring you along for the ride. Thanks for joining me this time and I'll see you on the next part real soon. Thanks, bye.